morning all all right what better way to wake up the audience what better way to say hey today's videos are getting started up than talking about the collective bargaining agreement the 50 50 split in revenues the escrow and all that other fun stuff so i wanted to talk about this because i know there are new fans to the game and there are new fans uh, that that may not know how all the financials work and i certainly see some longtime fans that don't seem to understand how the financials work either but there are those who will just decide that whatever the owners say is bad and we just won't believe it and i think that's part of what we see when it comes to escrow with the salary cap and all that so the flat cap that's been in place for years now uh has been a bone of contention with players on some level but with fans too saying no if if uh if my team had a salary cap of 90 million dollars then we wouldn't have this problem this this would be fine i could afford to go out and sign new players and all that, and while that's that's certainly true, there's a reason the salary cap hasn't just blown up over the last couple of years, while revenues we know have gotten better, right? So, uh, the players and the owners get a 50-50 split in revenue. This was not an easy setup to get established, in that initially, when the salary cap came in, it was a 55% share that the players got and 45% to the owners, which didn't sit well with the owners right away. And so that got dropped to 50-50. And something else owners didn't like was simple. So every year they come up with this projection of how much money the league's going to going to make. And they say, all right, that's your salary cap expenditure for next season. And then at the end of that year, they look at the money and say, well, wait a minute, we didn't make the money we thought we were going to. So we need to have a fund. We need to have something that makes sure that the players are actually getting a 50-50 split. This isn't fair because with us paying that out and us not meeting our projected numbers, that means the players got more than 50%. So escrow is designed to make sure that it's a 50-50 split. And it has been controversial ever since. So escrow is an amount of money that gets deducted from their paychecks. And it's been as high as 20%. 2021-2022 uh, was 17.2%, meaning 17.2% of each paycheck the players get goes into a fund where they might not get the money back. They might get the money back in a year. They might get it back in two years. And it's once the, league's, once the league has finalized the amount of money that they made, right? And they've said, okay, we made $5.6 this year. And then they figure out the half and they figure out who gets what. And then the escrow money either goes back to the players because, yep, we made what we thought we would. Or the NHL, the owners keep it. They say, no, we're keeping that. And again, players may not know for years. So I've seen a lot of people say, well, but they're millionaires, so who cares? Well, it could be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I don't think there's anybody who would say, well, you know, if I make $100,000, 20 grand being gone, yeah, it's, it's okay as long as the owner does something good with it. So again, if it's millions of dollars and you lose hundreds of thousands of dollars, I, it's okay as long as the owners did something with it. And this is in the midst of, of course, fans and media talking about how greedy the players are and look at their, their salary cap. So, you know, looking at, at a guy with a $10 million salary cap, his actual money that he gets paid out is, what, $8.3 million? A little under $8.3 million? So again, the salary cap hits what it is, and they may not get that money back. So that's it's a lot of money. And regardless of how much they're paid and how easy they have it, it's a lot of money. And so... Uh, with the distrust you have between the union and the owners, which is all, has never really fully gone away. It's more of a partnership now, obviously, than it was before the salary cap era. So the more money the NHL makes, the more money the players make. But it, it, there's, there's still issues. So this year, the, um, the escrow number was 10%. And then the following three seasons, from 2023 until 2026, it is set at 6%. So the collective bargaining agreement... Uh, ends in 2026, although if there's a certain amount owed in escrow, I think it's between 150 and 250 million, uh, the NHL can extend it a year longer. I don't think that's going to happen because revenues have gone way up much quicker, I think, than the NHL expected. So in, in previous years, before the, the pandemic and everything just blew up financially for the NHL and they lost so much money, in 2020 2021 and a little bit in 2022 as well although things definitely got better uh the the reality is that the nhl would have a very rosy picture of things like well we're gonna make five billion dollars next year 
and the NHLPA would come in and go, hey, we want to put a 5% escalator on the salary cap as well. So you would have owners saying, well, the NHL saying we're going to make this amount, and the players saying we're going to put an escalator because we think we think the league will make more than that. And then at the end of the year, um, they were wrong. And and the, the actual revenues were lower than they projected. So what you end up doing here is you're signing contracts, you're you're signing guys to an amount of money that you're not you're not drawing in, again for that 50-50 split. So escrow numbers end up going up, which makes players even more upset because it's like, hey, get your books in order. You guys, you had two rows of a forecast. Why is that the player's fault? And the owner's answer would be, well, hey, we gave that rosy forecast. You guys got the money based on it. And then we didn't get the money out of that rosy forecast. So the NHLPA definitely took its share of, of blame for using the escalator to, to drive the cap up. But really, it's on it's on the NHL for definitely seeing, oh, we're going to make you know $25 billion this year. And then you're not going to make that. So, yeah, that's that's an issue, and that's definitely something I think the league still needs to work on. I remember in 2020, January of 2020, where uh, the GMs were told, yep, uh, salary cap's going to go up by, I think it was $4 million. They projected the, the cap was going to go up. Everything looks great. And then two months later, the league shut down. So you had GMs who were planning for a following season where the salary cap was going to go up by a lot, and then it didn't. And so... In the interim, they may have signed a contract or two to a player that if they had known that salary cap wasn't actually going to go up, they wouldn't have signed for that amount. So put them kind of behind the eight ball there. Now, again, the CBA running through 2026 kind of makes me feel nervous. And I say that because that's only three years from now. That is not a very long agreement. The NHL needs to have at least 15 years of labor peace. Because one thing Gary Bettman uh, rightfully I think, take criticism for is the amount of lockouts that he has oversaw, the amount of lost games the league has gone through. Um, and while you can definitely blame the owners for that as well, uh, it is, I, I think it's, it's a, that's a 50-50 split too, I would say, between Batman and the owners on the fact that there have been as many lockouts as there were. Now, the CBA that ended any talks of a lockout in 2020 um, that CBA, there were certain things in there that the owners weren't necessarily all that happy about. We'll see whether or not things go sideways in the next negotiation, but escrow is going to get mentioned a lot. Um, players, and I understand why they think this way, they don't see the, that, that the escrow should be there at all. Artemi Panarin was very, very vocal about the, uh, the, the fact there was an escrow uh, back in 2020, and it was seen as a huge potential hurdle to the NHL coming back to play that at a time where you know the league's trying to come back where there's not much sports going on it was the perfect time for the NHL to come back they would have you know a lot of people watching who normally wouldn't be because people wanted sports to watch uh but Panarin was very vocal that you know the escrow needed to go away like this wasn't just a well if only it wasn't 20 percent this was we hate it and he was speaking for a lot of players a lot of players hate escrow, but the league also didn't like losing the money. So the league lost $3.6 billion in 2021. At least that's a rough estimate. Um, and it, it's they didn't have full fan attendance. Fans started filtering in towards the end of the season in certain locations. Uh, but the $3.6 billion is an estimate based on the loss of tickets and arena sales. Owners saying that when fans are in attendance, they average about $100 being spent. Uh, so about $100 of fan is spent in the arena on, on food, you know, so, so like your concessions, merchandise, and all of that. So it's not just ticket sales you're losing, you're losing all that arena revenue as well, right? So that's a lot of money. And so for the NHL players, they didn't pay that money, but they end up owing that money because it's a 50-50 split. And there was a billion dollars lost in 2019-2020 before that other $3.6 billion due to the pause and then the bubble playoffs did not generate revenue. They they cost the league money to put together. It was an expensive thing. And they said, we'll never do this again when that was done because it costs so much money. It was a very expensive setup. So losing, that's a, that's a combined $4.6 billion, right? Estimated $4.6 billion. So that means the players were paid almost $2.5 billion in, and again, minus your escrow, which went up because of 2020, 
but they, they there's a lot of money that the league lost that the players didn't. And I say I say didn't because I understand the escrow means they did, but they didn't have their wages drop. It's not like when the NHL came back to play that we saw a drop in the salary cap, which I at the time had felt like should happen. And, I, and I'll say why. Where we're at now with the flat cap, if they had just dropped salaries and found some way to just adjust contracts down because of the down revenues and say, look, this is a once in a lifetime thing, never happens again, we would already have seen those those salaries bounce right back up. The thing is, of course, if a guy's on a long-term contract, you adjust it back up to its normal. I, I understand it would have been a logistical nightmare on some level, but I knew that by not adjusting the, the, the players' pay down, they owed the money. And so there's still roughly a billion dollars that was owed by the players uh, coming into, I believe, coming into this season. And the idea was that it wasn't going to be fully paid this year. It's not far off, though. So the 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 amount that's owed by the players in, you know, the lost, the lost revenues for the NHL that they were paid, that should be gone by the end of next season easily. I, I'll go ahead and say it's probably going to be paid off early next season. Just from the rosy, um, and again, rosy projections, uh, you know, they're doing it again. The NHL, this is why I always kind of chuckle when I see, like, you know, Batman. Well, we could raise it by a lot. It's like, ah, he's not learning. No, the league's not learning. They're just not. Um, and and again, you know, there. I don't think there's anything wrong with being a little guarded and saying, yeah, we think it, it, it it's going well right now. We'll see. And just go with that. But it... It's like, yeah, we got record revenues and look at all this ad revenue and look at all these ads everywhere and we're doing great. Yeah, okay, um, so the salary has stayed the same for the players while the escrow number has fluctuated wildly. So again, if you were losing 17.2% last year, this year you're losing 10%, which is all paid out. That's all paid out before the playoffs. There's a playoff fund, but it is nowhere near the amount of money that players get paid during the regular season. So... You've already had a, an increase in your wage, even if your contract stayed, stayed the same between last season and this year, and next year that, that escrow number drops to 6%. And there shouldn't be any problem. Now, I do expect in 2026 for the players to say, we're kind of done with escrow. We'd like it to go away. Uh, if that was going to be the case, the NHL would want some other safeguard. Uh, and, and again, you know, it really is a matter of having projections that are a little more conservative, I think would help. I think players would be much happier to hear, hey, so we projected we were going to make 5.4 billion in this season. We actually made 5.7. So yeah, salary cap's going through the roof because we made way more than we thought we would. And that's going to keep going. One thing to keep in mind too is from an owner's standpoint in 2020, franchise values dropped. Uh, the Forbes list, the average was 2% that they dropped. Now, that's bounced back as well. We have the ownership of the Senators, which still not decided. Uh, but it, 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 I'm just looking out the window to see is there... No, there's no ownership. Anyways, uh, but franchise values dropped, which of course would have given owners a little bit of a, 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 a nervous feeling about things, but they've come back up, right? And, and the leagues really got those revenues coming in. Now we saw... Uh, just an absolute ton. In terms of attendance, yeah, things are off a little bit from where they were in, say, 2018, 2019, or 2019, 2020 before the pause, but not that much. Really not that much. And now the league has added the ESPN contract. They get the money from that. As much as the digital boards bother people, that's a lot of revenue. That's a lot of money. Uh, the ads on jerseys, the ads on, on uh, the helmets, and all of that. And of course, uh, if you haven't seen what what it's the the ads on jerseys have done to the Stanley Cup patch, it's it's now on the same side as the A or the C on the jerseys, and it doesn't look right. It just it just doesn't look right because you have to have the ad on the one side. And anyways, uh, so that's a whole other thing. But again, that's extra revenue. That's the NHL's way of going. We are not sacrificing revenue. We know it's the Stanley Cup final. We're not sacrificing revenue. And I've seen I've seen people say as well, like, well, you know, th this this final is not going to generate a lot of money, and it's not going to help. I think it will. I think the Florida Vegas will generate a lot of money. I know Vegas generates a lot of money. I've 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 gone to Vegas a number of times. Uh, it's a high number. I'm planning to go again this summer. I love the city of Las Vegas. Yeah, that franchise makes some money. 
And I, I really think that when the day comes that Vegas drops in the standings, I still think that team's going to make a lot of money. Not as much as it is now, but it's still going to make a lot of money. And that only increases the value of the league. We've added Seattle as well. Seattle's doing quite well, uh, two years into their existence, of course. And so there's there's a couple of issues that the NHLPA has a lot of interest in. So I can loop this in because there was the discussion of the NHLPA and, and their view on the Arizona Coyotes. And this is where they have a say. Because since the, the money is a 50-50 split, if there is a franchise in the league that's dragging down the salary cap and dragging down the revenues on some level, uh, the NHLPA would be interested in seeing that drag not exist anymore. So, uh, again, there's creative bookkeeping that takes place with professional sports. We know this. Uh, we, we are well aware that billionaires can just, uh, I think it's worth this today, and I think it's worth that tomorrow, and... Uh, if it's being taxed, it's worth nothing. I lose all my money. But at any rate, uh, it, 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 I, I find it to be an interesting discussion when it gets into the escrow and all the all of the, the salary cap implications and everything. But it, it is not as simple as, well, the owners are making this amount of money now, so they should pay the salary cap. The, the, where that argument falls apart is, in 2020 and 2021, the league wasn't generating the revenue and there were owners at the time that said, we could just shut this thing down and make more money than we will if we actually play the hockey. Uh, they, they paid to make sure that hockey was around in 2021. Uh, and, and again, you know, it, it was a good idea in the long term, but financially, short term, it would have made more sense for them not to have hockey that year. But at any rate, we are where we are. Uh, they should have the rest of the uh, debt paid off next year. And I think there'll be a real discussion of whether or not to drop escrow. I Again, I think it would be replaced by something else, but we'll see. Um, and I've seen people talk about, you know, well, well, they should get rid of the hard cap. Owners won't get rid of the hard cap. Once they got that hard cap in place, there, there's no way you give that up. You, they can't. Because if they give it up, they will never get it back. And I think they know they'll never get it back. So if they brought in like a, a luxury tax for teams over the cap, it just won't go away or it, it, they, they can't bring that back. And I think that's why too, when we talk about teams that are circumventing the, the, the salary cap and getting over, I think that's why owners really don't care that much because they understand certain teams can afford to do that. And with the flat cap, we saw over half the league needing LTIR this year to stay under the salary cap. And so there's, there's definitely some creative bookkeeping that takes place and it's where we are. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always, in the event you're still awake. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And yeah, it's the annual escrow discussion. But I, I think this might be the last time we need to really discuss escrow until we're getting closer to the CBA. And I do think this is going to be uh, an issue with players where they say, yeah, that's 6%. Let's just make it zero. And then figure out a way going forward to where the, the projections match up a little bit more. Maybe you make those projections a little bit later. Maybe you bring in some other factor that can alter the cap up or down, depending on revenues that isn't in place now. But that's for three years from now, when that discussion gets going. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like I said, I will talk to you again soon. And thank you guys so much for all your support.